Hello, this is Captain Kaudhiri once again. In my last session, I talked about the celestial sphere, concept of celestial sphere, and I defined a few basic things of the celestial sphere. I need to define a few more so that I can do the calculations on celestial sphere. So uh, uh, let us uh, look at the celestial sphere from different views and I suggest you move on with me. We will look at the celestial sphere from different angles. Now as I told you in my previous session, let us look at the observer from the side in such a way that he appears in the highest point and it is not necessary that he is at port. He can be at any latitude including northern hemispheres or southern hemispheres latitude. Now this is the celestial sphere and we had defined observer's zenith to be here, observer's rational horizon to be here and these to be vertical circle of the observer. Now, observer's vertical circle are the grid circle on celestial sphere passing through observer's zenith or, or you can say they are the grid circles on celestial sphere which are cutting the observer's rational horizon at 90 degrees. Or you can also say that observer's vertical circles are grid circle on celestial sphere which are vertical about observer's position. Or I tell the students, you imagine a point on your rational horizon on one side and also on the other side and imagine a circle drawn through your zenith across the sky. This particular circle which you see in the sky will be your vertical circle. So how many vertical circles you have? You can have millions and millions. So remember, that is how you can call yourself also a millionaire. Actually, all the astronomical calculations assume that the point of observation is the center of the earth. It is as if you are taking all the verticals and horizontal angles from the center of the earth. Right? So now, can you imagine yourself to be at the center of the earth with earth being transparent and so on? It is a little difficult to imagine. So what we will try to do is we will not put you through a great difficulty like that. I will ask you to do something else. What I ask you then to do is go outside go outside in the space even beyond the observer's zenith and try to view the earth and the celestial sphere from that point so if you picture if you picture the celestial sphere from top of zenith that means the camera is over here you would see The celestial sphere like this and all the vertical circles of observer appearing like this. This is the celestial sphere in plane of observer's rational horizon. Later on when we do the calculation you will find that this is one of the most important projections that you will be studying. You are viewing the celestial sphere in the plane of observer's rational horizon. So you can assume that you are lying down at the center of the earth and viewing outside from there or you are viewing from there. Uh, the things won't be different. The things would be same. And if you say this is east-west direction and I have written V. This is north-south direction. And basically, what you see in the center of the picture is observer zenith as well as observer himself. I will want you to imagine, if you are seeing from top, I will want you to imagine that this is not a flat circle, but it is a dome as seen from top. And these are the stripes and that star which was here. This is the altitude and this is the zenith distance. Can you relate the two diagram? In this diagram, this is the altitude. In this diagram, this is the altitude. In both the diagrams, altitude is the angular distance from observer's rational horizon. In this diagram where this arc is true zenith distance of the body, in this diagram, this part is the true zenith distance. I hope you can relate. You imagine that you are seeing the globe from top. You are seeing 50% of the globe because you are seeing the dome from top this is the highest point and this is ground area. 
So first of all, before we proceed further, whenever I draw this diagram, please remember two things. This is the ground level. This is the highest point zenith, observer's zenith. And you are looking at, as if you are looking at the dome from top, right? These are the directions, west, east, north, south. And these lines which you see are observer's vertical circle. Now, uh, you may casually remember that every diameter on this diagram, this diagram which is celestial sphere in the plane of observer's rational horizon, every diameter is observer's vertical circle. So, observer's vertical circle helps you define true altitude and true zenith distance. Those things were defined in the previous lecture also. Uh, I want to ask you a question. If you are looking at an observer on the earth and you are looking at an observer who is at 30 degrees north, you are not looking at the earth with this north-south pole vertical and equator like this and pole like this. I don't want you to look at the earth like this. I want you to look at the earth with observer who is at 30 degrees north coming in the center of the picture. If observer who is at 30 degrees north latitude to be brought is to be brought at the center of the picture, what I need to do is I need to tilt the earth forward so that the equator comes 30 degrees below its normal position and the north pole comes 30 degree below its normal position and, and therefore all the parallels of latitude would appear like this and the meridians would appear like this. As I told you before, earth can be considered as transparent globe with a powerful point source of light in the center and when that light is switched on, the graticule will fall on the celestial sphere as shadow. Now, the shadow of geographic pole will become celestial pole, shadow of, shadow of equator will become equinoctial, geographical meridian will become celestial meridian and so on. Now, can I say that celestial sphere in a way therefore is a magnified view of the earth itself? Because if we, if we increase the earth to the size of celestial sphere, Everything on the earth is projected on the celestial sphere. So, anything on the celestial sphere can be projected back on the earth. Everything on the earth can be projected to the celestial sphere. So, if I say in the center of picture here is the observer with the equator 30 degrees down. In the diagram of celestial sphere, in the diagram of celestial sphere, if from here to here is 90, then to show the observer's zenith to be in the center of picture, I need to put the equinoctial 30 degrees down and I need to put north celestial pole 30 degrees below the normal position. And therefore, these become the celestial meridian and the parallels of latitude can be represented like this. Now what I want to do is, I want to capture a meridian, celestial meridian which is passing through the star. I want to identify the observer's celestial meridian. And I want to also identify observer's vertical circle which is passing through the body. So, what I have just disclosed to you is the famous PZX triangle. This is how the PZX triangle is formed. Let us look at the PZX triangle in a more clear way. Or let us say if I have to make the celestial sphere in the plane of observer's rational horizon. And in that diagram of celestial sphere, I want to magnify, I want to glorify this PZX triangle. What I do? What I do is I draw a circle divided in four parts. I come to know that the observer's latitude is 30 degrees north. This is celestial sphere, this is observer's zenith. I write down the directions V, this is north south direction. Observer's latitude was 30 degrees north. What I do is I divide this in nine parts. Each part
part each segment is equal to 10 degrees so equinoctial comes here north celestial pole this was the star I draw the celestial meridian through the star I draw observers vertical circle through the body and I get the famous Zx triangle now let's try and understand a few uh, more terms of celestial astronomy we have already understood this arc of observers vertical circle through the body as true altitude of the star this arc as true zenith distance right now in this diagram how many meridians do you see I see three meridians a meridian passing through the star a meridian passing through the observer zenith and this meridian which is different than observer celestial meridian is observer's inferior meridian pz is part of observer's celestial meridian px is part of a celestial meridian passing through the body zx is observer's vertical circle through the body if i consider the arc of celestial meridian through the star if i consider the arc of celestial meridian passing through the star then the arc of celestial meridian passing through the star between the star and equinoctial is the declination of the star so remember two things about the declination declination is measured on meridian that is meridian passing through the star and declination is measured north or south of equinoctial so in this particular case you can see that the declination of the star is north if this is the declination the remaining part which is complement of declination is called polar distance if the star was on the other side of equinoctial we would have said polar distance is 90 plus d but since the star is on the same side as pole of equinoctial we will say polar distance is 90 minus d so remember declination is an arc of celestial meridian passing through the body between the body and the equinoctial now before we proceed further we should also try and see the rising and setting of the body the body rises here and sets here this is because the earth spins eastward and because the earth spins eastward all the heavenly bodies they appear to go from east to west so likewise the star will rise here and set here so if I ask you the star rising here what is this arc you shouldn't say declination because this is not the arc of celestial meridian this is the arc of observers rational horizon strictly strictly the declination is arc of celestial meridian passing through the star amplitude is a very important term now, what I will do is I will try to explain you uh, these terms in a fresh diagram So once again to draw a celestial sphere diagram in the plane of observer's rational horizon what I do is I draw a circle divide in four parts here is observer's zenith V north south observer's latitude 30 degrees so equinoctial comes to south by 30 degrees for that what I do is I divide this part from here to here to be 90 divide it in 9 parts each part is equivalent to 10 degrees so equinoctial comes here by the same amount the pole comes here not celestial pole we are looking we are trying to trace this star this is the meridian passing through the star this is observer's vertical circle passing through the body now if this is the apparent daily path of the star we'll call this d dash b the star rises in the east sets in the west i told you this arc of celestial meridian passing through the star from equinoctial to the body is called declination now if this is declination then what is this is this also declination no because this is not arc of meridian this is arc of observers rational horizon and incidentally if the star is rising here this particular arc 
or this angle as measured at Z is amplitude. Amplitude is the arc of observer's rational horizon or the angle at observer's zenith between observer's vertical circle passing through the body at the time of theoretical rising or setting and observer's prime vertical which is WZE. So amplitude is an angle which is measured only at theoretical rising or setting. Amplitude is the angle measured with respect to east or west. It is not measured with respect to north south. After having defined amplitude as the arc of observer's rational horizon or angle at observer's zenith between the observer's vertical circle passing through the body at the time of theoretical rising or setting and observer's prime vertical which is WZE. We have understood one thing that amplitude should be measured only at observer's zenith. Who takes the amplitude? Who takes amplitude observation or azimuth observation? The observer. So this angle is measured at observer's zenith. There is another angle which is uh, azimuth which I would say is the cousin sister of amplitude. It is measured at observer's zenith like amplitude. As amplitude is measured only at the time of theoretical rising or setting, azimuth is measured anytime. Amplitude is measured with respect to observer's prime vertical. Azimuth is measured with respect to observer's celestial meridian. Both are measured as angle at observer's zenith or arc of observer's rational horizon. So let us now define the azimuth of the body. Azimuth of the body is the smaller angle, not the larger one. It is the smaller angle between the observer's vertical circle passing through the body and observer's celestial meridian. So sometimes uh, this angle Z, the azimuth which we are talking about, it can be outside the PZX triangle. It is not necessarily inside the PZX triangle. What is important that it should be a smaller angle. So in this particular case, azimuth is inside the PZX triangle. So azimuth and amplitude are defined in similar ways. Let us discover the other parts of this PZX triangle. Now this is a measure of latitude. So this is also measure of latitude. So this part is co-latitude. This is declination. So from here to here is a polar distance. If the star and pole are on the same side, then uh, polar distance is 90 minus declination. If the star was here, that means on the other side of equinoctial, we would have said polar distance is 90 plus declination. Let me tell you, our angle is one of the most important uh, astronomical terms and you must understand it properly. Just put your entire mind and concentration on what I tell you. Our angle is an angle measured at celestial pole. Now, our angle measurement starts from observer's celestial meridian. Now, if you look at the PZX triangle, regardless of north or south latitude, if you look at the PZX triangle on the east side, then the internal angle is called EHA. And if this triangle, PZX triangle, had formed on the west side, the internal angle would be called LHA. Now, the thing is, how to clearly know the difference between EHA and LHA, whether we are talking about north latitude or we are talking about south latitude. So what I suggest is, you must understand that this hour angle is measured starting from observer's celestial meridian. Now, if my journey starts looking at E, then the angle measured till the meridian passing through the body is EHA. Whereas, if my journey starts looking at W, then the angle measured till the meridian passing through the body is called LHA. So in this particular case, this is EHA and this is LHA. This rule will apply even for southern latitude. Have you left something? Oh yes, this angle, which is the angle between the meridian passing through the body and observers vertical circle made at the body is called parallactic angle. So I hope you have enjoyed learning these various terms with me of celestial astronomy, particularly related to the celestial sphere.